Guys, welcome back. So today we're going to look at a topic we haven't yet touched on on the channel, no. a rare thing at this point. Yeah. Um, we have a load of golf balls that have just arrived for us to do a fairly significant test uh, in the next few weeks. And one of the things that we thought we could do while we have the golf balls and we're waiting for others to come in is, is test some of the, the sort of flight characteristics with them, some of the claims made against them. Yep. Uh, obviously, the certain golf balls are considered <coughs> premium. That's high performance, distance, spin, etc. Some are designated more towards maybe just one performance characteristics like distance. Yes. Uh, and that's what we want to test today with the construction of the golf ball being solid core for everything. Yeah. How does that change the, the performance characteristics? I think it's really relevant because when you go to a store, you've got Pro V1s, you've got TP5s, you've yeah. got Bridgestone uh, B series on the wall. They're going to be in the upper price point. Then there's going to be balls like Velocity and, and the comparable ones from other companies yeah. that are a solid 40% cheaper. Yeah, so it's, a, it's right on that, isn't yeah. it? So right on that sort of 40% number. So if price is, is something that people are conscious about and obviously losing golf balls, et cetera, et cetera, which you know, a lot of people are conscious of that, uh, then this will be interesting. What will also be interesting is some of the claims that have been made over the years with regards to spin rates, curvature. Yes, curvature. Are these golf balls more accurate? That sort of stuff. Let's yeah. see if there's more sort of subplots to, to this test. Um, we're going to test it straight up as we always do with a wedge, a mid iron, and a driver. Yeah. And uh, but we we may we may fill around with some other things as well. Sure. Sounds good. All right. Um, so I've got 54 degree wedge here. Perfect. What should I start with? Which ball? Start with the velocity. Okay. Velocity. Yeah. Let's. Uh, sorry. Should should mention that the golf balls we're <laughs> testing. Um, we have a Titleist Pro V1. Yeah. Uh, obviously the the standard golf ball in the marketplace that that everyone else is measured from. And we're also sticking to the same company. We're going to go with the Titleist Velocity, which is the distance ball. Obviously, name gives away what, what they're go looking yeah. for there, which is obviously maximum speed. Looking for that to, to really be a, a distance achiever. Okay. So I swing that it. Mm hmm. Those two are identical. Mm -hmm. To me, it looks like it's launching higher. And yeah, and spinning. landing flatter. Yeah, spinning less also. And it's nice. Good. Nice. 
Look nice. That's a really good one. Looked like I had more on it, to be honest. That was a really good one. It, it is a bit faster. Yeah. Check the club head speed, but I think it's the same. 118 to 119 every time. That's good. That's a goodie. Yeah. How'd that feel? Good. That's nice. Yep. And that looks like a wedge shot. Oh, mm. tasty, tasty. So this is the difference. It goes straighter too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matty boy. Um, your thoughts on hitting them both? What did they feel like? Did you feel the? Did you feel like one was really hard and one was really soft? And not so much. I don't think velocity is as hard feeling as a ball as you would expect. Yeah. Based on it being, you know, not as many layers and not as high price a ball. Yeah. It's not like a rock. I wouldn't have any feel issue with it. Mm -hmm. Firmer for sure, but not, you know, off-putting. Not offensive. No. Titleist talk a lot in their fitting philosophy with golf balls on feel. Okay. Something that they actually apologize for at the start of a PK session, mm -hmm. product knowledge session, is they go, we will say feel more than you're comfortable <laughs> with. <laughs> Too many times. We're, like, we're laughing at, but um, it's, it's true because it, it's a big part of, of the ball selection process. More than 50% of your game is played from 100 yards and in. Mm -hmm. Those are your feel clubs. Yes. Putter, wedges, round the greens, being able to chip with it. We played with that professional 90 the other day. I have to say, I really like chipping with it. I love chipping with it, and I love short irons with uh -huh. it. Felt great. Felt great. Felt like you'd so much oh. control. Felt yep. like the ball wasn't jumping off the face. And, so true. And that's something, like, I've always really went for the firmer golf ball, but in playing that golf ball the other day, it made me think about that. It's to go, okay, is there some way I can take a bit of that and put it in with my other needs and, and preferences one, yeah. maybe in there somewhere. Interesting. So from a launch perspective, we saw Pro V1 launch a degree and a half lower and it actually was 1500 RPMs uh, higher in spin. Yeah, very that's, spin. that's really significant. Quite a lot. And Pro V1's not the spinniest ball from Tylus now. Correct. Pro V1X is actually spinnier. So mm -hmm. quite a disparity. It's exactly what the ball fight looked like. Took off higher, spun less, yeah. flew a, you know, a yard further on average. Ball speed wise, uh, not not all that sort yeah. of all that different. Standardize those. Okay, uh, let's have a look into the mid iron. Fairly identical. I wasn't expecting this. I would have guessed 6,500 with the Pro V1, 5,800 yeah. spin with velocity, mm -hmm. and I would have expected two degrees of launch. But they were remarkably similar. Still subtly different, mind yeah. you, but not as much as I would have thought. On the range. Looking at your ball flying out there, yeah, you're not identifying much of a difference here, to be honest. Fair to say. Quite impressive to see the velocity still spinning, still retaining that much iron spin. And it, it, this is the thing. I mean, there's players that maybe don't need a ton of wedge spin. Correct. If they, players, if they tend yeah. to flip it a bit and launch it high. It's, it's that kind of AVX player, isn't it, who tries to kind of get those wedges to, to not rip off the green. And, so, and then this is a ball that will still give you some decent lift on an iron shot, which yeah. a lot of people can still use. So, so not really much to talk about there. No. Quite, quite similar. Into the driver. Big stick. Big boy. This was interesting to Very. us. Very. The Pro V1 was, well, it was consistently quicker. Always 170, and I couldn't get it over 168. Tried a few extras. 168.5 was about where you redlined on the velocity. And show people the club head speed was literally the same. Same. So there's nothing else, nothing else we could have done on that. Um, it was just consistently a couple miles an hour faster. Um, launch and spin, you would say, are likely going to fall in the same window with the driver. Yep, for the most part, Matt. I mean, there's... There's not that much, um, you know, appearance-wise between these two that are going to change that an awful lot. But no. it's just that it's a, it's, a, it's a velocity issue. It is. Ironically, it's a bit of a velocity issue. Well, this is a perfect kind of, again, this isn't a million shots. We know this isn't the most scientific test. But take this as a snapshot and say, 
that distance ball mm -hmm. didn't actually go further yeah. than the premium ball in this case. And when you look at the numbers though, for a th probably in, in, in the marketplace of that 40% of a discount, if, if, you're, if you're in your long game, your irons are gonna fly pretty much the same. Yeah, your driver's gonna fly the your same. Your driver's gonna fly for the most part the same. Yes. You're probably quite, you're quite encouraged to see very similar performance. Yes. Here's where it differs though. Yeah, this is where your money is spent on the more expensive ball. We went to a 50 yard shot mm -hmm. thinking that there's got to be some chipping differences with this. Yeah. And, and they are significant. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big, big difference. You, you call it from behind the camera, you're going, those wedge shots look completely different. Completely different. One looks like you're kind of trying to hit like a little floppy one. Yeah. It's kind of just like, just like an under, underhand lob. Yeah, yeah. Those velocities looked like an underhand lob. Yeah. And the Pro V1 was sort of driven in there, skip, skip, and then actually had some backup some to it. From Titleist Research, they sent a group of golfers uh, down to Pinehurst to play the cradle, yep. nine hole um, short course there. Had them mark their score. Uh -huh. So they had, it was like scratch to five handicap, you know, five to 12, 12 to 18, something like that. Um, they had them play with a premium ball, Pro V1, um, versus a velocity or some two piece golf ball. Yep. The average shots saved for the high handicap, or how many, how many shots do you think they saved over nine holes? Which, or, 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 or which one do you think was a lower score? Yeah, I, I don't think the distance ball would give them a lower score. Probably the premium ball was a lower score. I don't know, two shots? Four. Four. Pair nine. What? Pair On nine, nine holes? nine holes. Really? So what the, what the Titleist have found in their extensive research is higher handicappers miss significantly more greens. Mm -hmm. They are the ones actually who need the benefit of this premium ball more than anyone. Okay, that's um, interesting. So they are the ones who are needing that short game. Now, the lower handicapper needs it because they're trying to keep a good score going. Yes. So when they, have, they miss six greens around or whatever it is, they need precision. Yeah. The reality is that the high handicapper is chipping onto the green almost every hole. True enough, you hit a Probably few Probably 75%, if not higher, yep. at times. So, in their research, the premium ball benefits the higher handicap golfer the most. That's not what I would have thought. Surprising, isn't it? So when we look at this, um, you know, I would, I would certainly challenge the higher handicap golfers to try golf balls with premium materials. Mm -hmm. Urethane covers, yeah. you know, uh, fast multi-layer cores right. in order to get driver performance, green side performance. We know there's price point options out there now if you're still, if sure. you're in that price uh, sort of, you know, sensitive market, but don't sacrifice on, mm. on that short game spin. That, yeah. that was, that's that was significant. And, and again, it was over a thousand on a full 54 as well, which yeah. that's 1500, 1500 on a full shot and they're 1,300 on a partial, on a partial. shot. Yeah, so I'm almost more surprised by the 1,300 on the half swing. I agree with that. Well, that's it's only 50 yards. Like 50 yards is not a lot of club head speed. You know, the difference between, you know, these greens are set pretty soft on foresight, but yep. the difference between that cane of coming in there and stopping, trickling out a little bit. Yeah, that, I, wouldn't, I would ignore that total. I would ignore we that. We both agreed no ball is going to stop dead from Especially 50 Especially not, at, you know, the firmer golf, uh, no. the firmer greens as we get into the summer months, you know, no, no green is, 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 you know, the ball is not stopping no. like it's landing in sand. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. So true. So true. Um, Good though. I mean, that's a perfect breakdown as to what occurs paying for the Pro V1 versus paying for the distance ball. There's yeah. going to be trade-offs in there. There's, there are trade-offs. Yep. There's, um, there's some performance trade-offs. Speed, it would appear, uh, from the mantle, is, there looks like a trade-off. There is absolutely a spin trade-offs in the short game Tons. Uh, shots. But for a 40% price reduction, you couldn't argue with someone no. um, you know, saving themselves some, some money and going after that price point. But to the back to the title of the, the video, does a, a distance golf ball go further? Yeah. 
the answer is actually no. Not really. Not yeah. really. No. In, in no way. I thought there might have been, Matty, a, a launch spin differential. Yeah. So even if the, I expected Pro V1 to be very fast and com yes. very competitive on speed, I thought the spin profiles would be different enough where the spin would be lower so it might be a flatter land angle on the velocity and then take that off. you might see a bit more trickle and, and a, maybe three or four extra carry yards. Didn't see it. And that's what we're talking about. When the distance conversation is driver. Mm. Mostly people aren't going, I want to hit my eight iron further. Yeah. So I think people ask, can I hit a distance ball further than a Pro V1 on my driver? Yeah. I would say probably not. Probably not. No. Um, so cool. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, when people are making their golf ball choices, this will help you uh, select based on, on performance, then you can identify to the price you're prepared to pay. Yes, fair. Which is, uh, which is obviously in everyone's mind as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Excellent. All righty. Guys, hopefully that was good food for thought. Um, something in there for, for you guys to, to take. Uh, the premium golf ball appears to be the highest performance in every category in which you place it in. Uh, there doesn't look to be a, a sizable uh, reason to not play a premium ball if price isn't in your mind so um, this test again shows what we've seen many times all right thanks for watching we'll see you again soon